Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the auxiliary belt um, and also how to take off the tensioner and idler so you can do your own belt change the correct way. Um, I'll also show you the sort of things to look out for whilst the belt's off. Uh, prior to that, to give myself a fighting chance so I can do it just with the bonnet up uh, and using basic tools, I'll just be removing the engine cover and then I'll be unclipping the power steering hose and also the power steering reservoir and then I'll be putting the reservoir over on top of the engine here. Okay, um, so now I've got all the room I need to um, be able to do the work that I'm going to do. Um, it's actually a good opportunity when you've got the timing belt cover off to also have a visual inspection of the timing area. My belt still isn't due a change for about another 15,000 miles so it's nice to see that it's in good looking condition, um, no cracks, no splits, no obvious signs of wear. Uh, you can also um, you know, just give the rollers and tensioners a wiggle on there as well and just check the general condition of the area. To illustrate it better what I'm going to do, this is the actual, this is a, an old tensioner that I removed from the car and this is what I'm actually going to be taking off. Um, you can actually see it just down here if I touch there that's the old that's the tensioner roller just there and then the idler roller is tucked away underneath um, on this the idler is missing um, and the reason for that is a it means that you can get the tensioner out of this very tight gap without having to remove anything else. Uh, I mean Haynes recommends taking off a front wheel and, um, and removing the wheel arch lining and kind of going in from underneath but this, this method um, you'll be able to see how you can do it all just from the top um, and not only do you get it out you also need to remove the idler wheel on this particular one because see that hole there that's one of the mounting bolts so there's two mounting bolts one at the top there and one just there so, uh, so you actually need to remove the idler wheel anyway just to get the tensioner unit off the car now when I uh, take the belt off there's a hole here which is a T60 Torx hole and I'll be uh, inserting a tool into that and then rotating it forwards and then what will happen is the holes so there's one hole here that will line up with the hole at the back there see that there and then I'll just be inserting just a slim screwdriver into that hole um, in order to hold the tension and that keeps the belt nice and loose enables me to take it off so I'll just show you that now so it's just a T60 Thing is to make sure it's really securely seated in there and start with your bar just slightly back from uh, halfway and then all you do is you just lean it lever it forwards it's 
far as it'll go. And then you just feel underneath. If you've not got a good grip, just grip it again. And that's it inserted there. So I can remove. And then it's just a question then of just unhooking the belt. It's a very simple operation. Just unhook it here. Bring it over the power steering pump. And then it'll just unravel. Probably won't translate very well on film, but anyway thing just unravels. And there we go. And there's the belt. Uh, this one's pretty new one. Still in excellent condition. I don't actually have to do anything on the car today. I'm just um, doing this video just because there's no D5 auxiliary belt removal videos. What I'll do actually, I'll just show you what my old belt looked like. So there's the two next to each other, which on the surface they look about the same. But the problem I had if you go back through my other videos is um, where you can see on the back there see how you've got six ribs one two three four five six and you look on the back you've actually only got one two three four five and that rib had worn away and the reason it had worn away is that I had a seized pulley on my um, alternator and the alternator pulley which is just tucked down there it's supposed to freewheel and um, and it wasn't anymore uh, and so that was causing stress uh, on the belt and it was causing the belt to flap it was also causing quite a nasty squeaking noise. Um, so I had a new alternator pulley fitted there's a way to test your alternator pulley uh, all you need to do is just insert a screwdriver down into the fins there just nice and carefully and then you just turn this pulley and if it turns clockwise with the screwdriver inserted then your pulley's okay the clutch mechanism's working if with the screwdriver inserted it stops dead then the clutch mechanism is seized on your alternator pulley and you need to um, get that swapped out uh, because it's likely to then cause additional stress on the belt which will then snap it and it could then obviously because of its proximity to the timing and because it also shares the, um, the crankshaft pulley down here it could end up um, slipping your timing and, um, and basically messing up your engine so um, it's pretty important to be aware of the uh, condition of, um, of all your pulleys so whilst it's off, whilst the belt's off what I'll do now is just show you, um, I mean these pulleys, like I say, they've only probably done about 2,000, 3,000 miles. I'll try and be quiet to see if you can hear anything. I'm turning it. And it's actually silenced. The only noise you can hear is actually my hand rubbing against um, the other pulleys. And that's what you want, a nice, smooth, easy turning action. What you also do as well is give them a little wiggle. Make sure they don't move too much side to side. These move virtually not at all side to side, which is excellent. Uh, it, when you change your belt, you are best to change the tensioner as well. And like I say, on that other unit, you just simply 
with it tensioned see that holes obscured there by the pulley but if this was tensioned all the way around and, and secured like I've just shown you that hole would be accessible so you just remove the bolt that's in there then you'll just simply need to remove the idler pulley and the way you do that the pulleys have caps on them black caps and all you do is you insert a thin screwdriver and they spring off now they can go missing so probably best thing to do is just to put a, a, a long strip of masking tape over the cap uh, before you try and ping it off then if it does go flying anywhere um, it's not going to disappear and you can retrieve it from the engine bay um, so that's it so yes it will be two bolts uh, you take it off and with that pulley removed there's not much space down there but it will actually maneuver and um, be able to be lifted up and out no problem at all so then um, yep you can also check you know the, like the power steering pulley which is the top one there aircon pulley down at the bottom as well and um, yeah just check on the basics whilst you're in there and then for putting the um, the belt back on it's very very simple what I'll be showing you is that you start off with the crank pulley which is just down here and you loop the belt round the top and bottom of that first of all uh, then you loop the belt down the around the aircon pulley underneath the aircon pulley and then you bring it up and you go over the power steering pulley so you're kind of doing a reverse L shape all the way along the bottom and then over the top and then it's just a zigzag then where it goes round and behind the alternator back forwards over the tensioner and round again behind the idler just there now what I'd recommend is probably working it so you fit the tensioner as the very last one some people recommend to fit it over the power steering as the last one but because of this raised edge because of this raised edge it just makes it a little bit trickier so why not do it on the smooth edged pulleys just there and it's um, a very simple operation that so um, so yeah so I'll now refit the belt no I'll tell you one more thing with these pulleys um, if you've got a later D5 I don't want to speculate as to exactly which models or anything like that um, but you the pulley uh, the, sorry the tensioner unit may have may not have this hidden bolt it will just have a completely separate bolt hole down here which means that you don't actually have to remove the um, the idler um, to get access to take it off to take off the bolt but you'll still need to remove the idler pulley anyway in order to take the whole thing out obviously if you have your alternator removed to um, to change the pulley on the alternator there's actually quite a lot of space down there um, for you to bring the tensioner unit out that way but um, so do check that they supply you with the correct tensioner unit for your D5 engine because there are two differences and, um, and they're not compatible. Right, I'll get this belt back on. Okay, so crankshaft first. Then the power steering. Round the power steering, back around the alternator. Now I'm going to do the idler pulley. There we have it. So 
so it's all just loosely on you can see there's a slackness there that's because the tension hasn't been put back into the belt then all I'll do is I'll insert the Torx bit into here just down here bring it forwards ever so slightly so I can release the uh, the locking pin screwdriver and then the tension will go back on the belt and that'll be job done Locking pin out. Just check that routing as you remove everything. And that all looks good. And that's how you do an auxiliary belt, nice and easy. I'll show you just one last thing. When I was talking about the pulleys, this is what an old used pulley sounds like. So not only have you got a lot of play left and right, and then listen, and you get that quite loud bearing noise as well. So, um, that's why that needed changing as well as the alternator pulley and that's why you may as well change out the whole tensioner unit and the idler all in one go when you change your belt and then it'll last for what, tens of thousands of miles hope you find that useful